Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to Thursday. Did you my did you like my new little little widget? My little countdown timer. <clears throat> um, say hello. Let me know where you're from. Hmm. I know someone did comment and it's not. Oh, there we are. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> Wait for a few more to come on. Hi, Sue. Hello, Shell. Hi, Mum. So my mum's watching for the first time tonight because Matilda is down visiting her. So she's showing her how to get on. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Rosie. Sunny Queensland. Oh, we wish. We wish. Well, I shouldn't say that. The sun was out today. It wasn't shining sunny, but it wasn't cloudy. So, and it did get to 14 degrees. So not too bad. But, yep, yeah, got a new beanie on tonight. Not a new one. A new one I found, the one I couldn't find. But my pom-pom's coming off, see? So I'm going to have to try and fix that before I lose it because it's a really nice soft fluffy one hi Mary <clears throat> um so um yep still in my front cold room and um yep yeah, it is cold I've got my I've got my granny blanket on so my little granny square blanket this week I'm organized and I've got it on before we start got it Different dog bed because he literally shredded the last one, completely de-stuffed it during last week's show um, and ate half of the inside of it, which hasn't gone down well this week. Uh, hi, Fiona. Uh, Shed guy's fine. He's in the kitchen having his dinner and watching Extraction 1. I can hear it just in the background. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Bev. Marilyn, hi. Um. So, yes, he's good. I watched Extraction 2 this week and we had a discussion saying I should really find one before I watch two, but I watched two because it was at the top of the screen, so I just watched it. But I do feel like I'd go back and watch one and it wouldn't matter. It would fill in some gaps. So, But it's pretty full on. It's just, yeah, violence, violence, violence. So um, not not a feel-good good movie, but not a feel-good movie. Um, what else did I watch? Um, yeah, two was good, so I'll go back and watch one. <laughs> um, what else did I watch this week? Um, there was one more episode of, um, oh, what is it? You know, the Tasmanian one that I said we were watching. can't remember what it's called. And two more episodes of Outlander. That's a bit slow, though. And something else. There was another episode of um, that I did see. Um, I watched Plane just because that came on after something else I was watching, Extraction, I think, Plane. And I just started something else. I can't remember what it was. mustn't have been that good. Anyway, that's because it's cold and when I finally collapse and stitch at night, there's nothing else on. So I do my hour of trumpet practice and then settle in to watch something. Um, okay, so we've got quite a few on now um so we'll make a start i haven't actually got much new to show you from the shop joe sent home a couple of things so i thought then i'd just do a bit of stitching with you and demoing on things that i've been doing this week you might have seen it on instagram uh, on stories and things hi karen um okay so a couple of new things that did come in uh these um little mini weaving glues so we've actually had these um, for a while on the website. We had 14 pin ones and I've not even ever used one. I really even know how to use it. But obviously people do because they've been selling from all over Australia. So people that know about it and no doubt have seen someone using it on YouTube or something and then have searched for it have brought us out. So I just went back and sourced some more. And so now we also have, I think that's a 21 pin and a 10 pin weaving loom and what they're for is basically for 
and I didn't put the link on the website because I haven't uploaded the new ones, just the old, the 14 ones on there, and it says sold out. Um, but there are some photos on the website. But basically, they're from mending, mending rips in jeans and things like that. You put the little loom, put the little loom sort of underneath the rip through the fabric, and then you weave um, just with thread back and forth over it to give it a um, you can see here this little sort of woven patch that pulls all your little tears in that I'm sure there's lots of other uses for it as well but um, there are some photos on there and there are instructions in there and I would say if you search on YouTube you'll find some tutorials on how they work um, so I've only got them in because they were requested and now people seem to be buying them from everywhere so and, and coming in from near and far to get them now that I've realised we've got them. So there's a 21 pin and a 10 and we might still have a 14 left. I'm quite not sure on that but we'll get some more. So there's little weave, weaving looms. If they are oh, man called Otto, yes I do need to watch that Fiona. I saw that that had been released because I didn't actually see, it's not, I don't have Foxtail but it's also coming out on some, one of the others because I have just about everything else. Um, Man called Otto. Yes, that was Tom Hanks, wasn't it? So I need to watch that. Sorry, that's just replying to the owners. Um, oh, there you go. Joe said search speed, search speed weave on YouTube, and you'll see how those little weaving looms. I'm going to do that afterwards. Are used. Okay. A um, couple of other little things that came in. Um, these sweet little um, tape measures. So they're just a really nice little gift. They're actually soft. They're like almost like they're not leather, obviously, but they're like a vinyl. And it says love beyond measure. And it's got a little um, pattern on the front and on the back. It says love beyond measure. So it's just a little tape measure. I'm not sure on the price on that. This one's not priced, but I know the rest were on the shop counter. Um, not on the website. So if you like it, um, just message in here if you want one of those. Um, Joe, do you remember how much they were? The other things were priced, but that one's not. Um, hi Sue, hi Mandy. Yeah, I think I'll have to. Um, I'll have to search that. Otto, I do remember seven dollars fifty for the tape measure. I do remember when it was on at the movies, and I thought that would be a nice one to see when we were seeing all the shorts. So I'm going to have to search that one out. Man called Otto. Will do. Um, and then just these little. Um, a bit hard to see. Maybe I'll switch to overhead and put it here okay so just the little thread cutters um they're not clover brand but they're obviously just another version of them and i think they were about 12.50 maybe um, if joe remembers so they've got the little blade in there and there's a hole there you can put it on a chain and wear it as a necklace and there's actually a blade like a rotary blade 28 mil one inside and so all those little cutouts here um, so for plain travelling or when you can't have scissors, um, you just flick it over that blade and cut your thread like that. So they came in today as well. Uh, and that's about all new I've got to show you in the shop. But I've got some other things to show you. So, first of all, this is not related to anything except that uh, I made something that wasn't mine, which is, I never get to do. So, Modern Quilt Group, um, Tassie Modern Quilt Group, uh, had a mystery mystery quilt program this year that uh, President Jane um, sourced the pattern. Hi, Tina. Um, it was in Make Modern magazine a few issues ago, if you subscribe to that. But anyway, she contacted the designer and asked um, if she could split it up into a mystery for us. And we all bought the patterns. So well, the Guild bought a pattern for every person that was doing it. And um, I thought, I don't know, I, I thought at the time when it started, oh, I should do this. I never do anything for myself. So I did all the cutting the very first day, which didn't take long at all. It was really easy, and you put it into a million snap lock bags, and then that was it, like six months ago. I never got any further, and I thought, but. So the last instalment came last week, and a meeting, an AGM was last night, and it was like, if you can get it done in time, um, bring the quilt up. Uh, well, I've cut it all. It's no good for anything else. I'm just going to have to make it. But it did, it was a good week's work, if not more, and I actually did 
follow the instructions or tried to follow the instructions, whereas I would normally take shortcuts, but I was a good girl and I followed the instructions, um, which also included cutting oversize and trimming back. And if you know me, you know that I know it's more accurate, but I hate that. I prefer to do the correct maths in the first place and just be accurate when I'm sewing and not have to trim back hundreds and hundreds of half square triangle blocks because it adds so much time. But anyway, I did it. I followed it. I followed it. And I finally got it together to get the quilt top ready for last night, which is amazing for me. And there were about, oh, I don't know, eight or ten people actually got it finished for last night, which is actually a really good result. I think 30 people signed up to it. So that's actually a pretty good result for it because it wasn't it wasn't a small clue it actually took quite a bit of work so i'm not going to probably not going to be able to get the whole thing in the shot but because it's quite big but i'll show you what i did i don't know what i'm going to do with it one day i'll quilt it and probably donate it for a raffle or something so it was mystery so you didn't know what you were making remember and we just had to choose four colorways and not know what it looked like in the end so you Everyone's last night looked different. I can't even think what it was called. If Jane's on here, she might tell us. But anyway, I'll hold it up so you can see as much as you can. So stand up. And remember, it is from my Modern Quilt Guild group, so I've got some, you know, bright, bright colours. So on the edges, it just just goes out into the borders on the edges you can see how it extends out into the border so yeah anyway so that was my once in five years project just for myself not a pattern not having to design it and take notes and all break it down and all the rest of it Jane did all the work of breaking it down so yeah it's nice, nice and bright and just some uh, bright modern fabrics and I guess maybe one day I might quilt it and um, yeah donate it or something like that um, or just add it to the pile but um, the pattern is available I, get, I think from the original designer um, or in the Make Modern magazine if you have that. So I can't even tell what it was called. Oh there you go. Thanks Joe. Um, Reliance by Brooke Shankland. That was the quilt and the designer. So Reliance by Brooke Shankland. And Jo joined up, but I don't think she's even started cutting. Which So she's probably actually better off than me because if you hadn't cut, you can just let it go and not worry about it. Okay, so um, just a couple of little demos just on stuff that I'm working on. Sometimes I think, what else can I show you? But I know there's always new people, um, even if it's not on the live or maybe on the replay that I can just show you really basic things and that again that you might have forgotten. So I've still been working on my Bloom and Marvelous corners. So the corners of my quilt that I showed you a few weeks ago when I was doing the quilt as you go. And these are my four corners because there's an extended version. So the original quilt, which was the free block of the month in the shop, um, was um just 16 blocks so four by four and in a quarter as you go straight square lot layout but now i'm turning it on point and putting four applique corners on it so um this is the four corners so i've glued them all up i think i showed you gluing last week on how to glue up your motifs all together and everything and i've hand applique two of them completely and then yesterday I actually did start machine appliqueing the last two just to get it over and done with because I'm anxious to start on a new project I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but I didn't quite get finished because I thought I might do this by hand just to show you these inner points. You can get them a little bit neater by hand than by machine and I'll just show you the stitch again um, around a leaf. So um, for those that haven't seen it before, I'll just show you, talk you through the applique stitch. So I've got it zoomed quite a way in. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Um, I am using one of our Hugs and Kisses applique needles. So nice and fine, but a long eye so I could, um, I could thread it easily. And I'm just using a silver Wonderfill um, Deco Bob thread, an 80 weight poly which is the same as what we have in our tubes now. 
So in these tubes, so 80 weight poly, so it's strong, but it was it's fine. And I'm just using a silver, so it's a blending colour. As you will see, um, Bentley has managed to attack this reel and I keep taking a piece off and then it breaks apart. So he's actually cut through <laughs> and cuts them. So at least he didn't, I got it out of him before he ruined the whole thing, as he has done with a couple of orophil spools. Um, but uh, anyway, it still works quite fine. So I just have the silver in the big and then I have all the little ones. Um, okay, so I've threaded and knotted that. And I'm just going to start on a leaf, so just a basic stitch. And then I'm going to show you these inner points here, which in my gluing I can see not exactly perfect and I can see a few pokies and things. So anyway, so I hold it so that I'm pinching it down flat so it's not flapping up because remember it's been... Um, glued down with Roxanne's basting glue, but just a couple of dots in the middle. So I've keep and kept my edges sort of up so that if I've got any pointies or pokies, I can still use my needle to smooth them out. But this one's pretty good. So I'm holding it so that I've got control and I'm coming up with my needle and just catching the edge fold of the fabric. Uh, it's a bit hard to see. There's the needle there, catching the edge fold of the fabric. Let's see if I can zoom in any more if it makes it any easy for you. Just take a minute. Okay, we might be able to come even, even closer. I've just got to make sure I keep it in, in the right place so you can see it. Okay, so I've come up and I've just caught the edge fold of the fabric there. And then I'm going to go down in exactly the same hole but just through the background. So I'm just poking the point of my needle into the background fabric but it's pretty much in the same hole. And then pinch it so it doesn't flap around so I can just move along and catch the edge of the fold of the fabric again there. Okay. And then pull straight up. And then I give it a little tug. And the tiniest bit of thread that's on the top there, because I've come straight up and straight down, then just sinks into the weave of that fabric. So back through the background, move along. Pull straight up, straight back down, same hole, but just through the background. Come back up through the edge of the applique piece. Down, long, tug. So all the movement of the thread is on the back side on the front we're just going straight up and straight down and when you give it that little tug the tinier piece tiniest piece of thread that's on the front just sinks into the weave of that green fabric and you will not even see it so I could be using a black thread or a bright red thread and you pretty much wouldn't see it so I'm working um, I'm right-handed but I'm working anti-clockwise so right to left so that's just the natural movement of my, my needle in my right hand. And I'm my stitch is going towards the applique piece. And sometimes I see people trying to do it this way, like that way into it. And it's to me, it's just very awkward. And it's very difficult to get it exactly in the edge where you want it. You're poking around. Whereas coming towards yourself and towards the applique piece that you're stitching down and pinching it down with your left thumbnail, you've got full control of the little leaf not flapping around and moving and the needle going exactly where you want it to go. So you just turn your work as you go. Get it back in the camera there. Same hole. Move along. Now, if I've got a little pokey, I'm just going to pretend I've got a little one there, a little point on the edge from my gluing. Then you just get the tip of the needle and just pull it under so you can smooth that out a bit more as you move around. And once you get going, you can do this quite quickly. The stitches are, say, two to three millimetres apart. As long as it's nice and firm, they don't have to be like every millimetre. You can move along. So on the back, if I'd hit exactly the same hole, I should have a solid back stitch on the back. I will show you in a minute, but it's probably too much of a blending thread for you to be able to see. I could have demoed in a 
dark thread so you could have seen it which I have been known to do okay so I'm getting back to the end I'm going through to the back so I can finish it off and if you can just if I hold it up you can just see the little dents where my stitches have gone where I've pulled them firmly but I can't see the thread at all it's just the little dents and once I've washed this and dissolved my paper that will all just um, steam into the fabric and you won't even see those you might be able to see the little dents in here where I've done that by machine as well so that's with the monopoly thread and again once that's washed all those little holes will um, just pump up um, sort of fluff up and um, you won't even see those holes either so this has already been stitched by machine this one's not stitched yet we'll do that in a minute anyway so through to the back and if you can see on the back the stitches I've got like a back stitch like a solid line because all the movement of my thread where I moved along to the next stitch is all on the back on the front it was just straight up and down to finish off I just make a loop take a little stitch over the thread and through the loop do that twice and that ties a nice knot okay Yeah, I'm just going to knot for the next section. And we're going to come over to this little shape that has inner points. I'm just going to pop that down so I can see if there's any comments. Same hole in the background every time. So, yes, Fiona, you come straight up, straight down into the same hole, but on coming up, you're going through two layers. Going down, you're just going through the background layer. So you're just poking it back down. I mean, close enough. You can't actually tell where the hole is exactly. Or well, you can. I can sort of see it there. But as long as you're not moving forward on the front. So straight up and down on the front, and on the back you move along. So as close as possible as you can get to the same hole and then you won't see any threads on the front and the applique police will love you all right so see on this shape i had an inner point for an inner point you must cut the like clip the fabric all the way to the edge of the paper and what that means is that you've got one raw thread here that can poke out so as much as i try and pull that when I'm gluing in as best I can sometimes there I can see it's just poking out a bit so we stitch up towards it and then I just take my needle and try and sweep that in as best I can and sweep that raw thread in okay then I'm going to put a stitch right in that inner point and then a second stitch in the inner point just to couch down that raw thread so that it can't poke out again. And I've managed to poke the pull that out. Okay, so two stitches and just couch down that raw thread and then move along the new direction. So this is the same as whether you glue over the edge of the applique paper like we do or even if you do traditional needle turn with an inner point you can't escape getting that one raw thread right in that in the point part of an inner point. So this is the way that you try and make it as best as possible by just sweeping it in. This one's not poking, so it's okay, but I'm still going to do a double stitch at that junction so that nothing can start to poke out and then move on to the next curve and move along okay so that's the applique stitch and the inner point if i've got any um, points on my curves because they are quite tiny curves then i can also use my needle to sweep those under and smooth them out just a little bit more and then stitch it down in place oops i've gone off camera feel I've used a bit too much glue underneath this but I'm trying to stitch through Roxanne's glue I mean just had a few dots so I had a bit of a pokey sweep it under 
couch it down. And this is where you want as blending a thread as possible because you are doing that little extra stitch there. So if I had a black thread, you would see it. Okay, and I'll just keep my way going around there until I've got that all stitched down and as smooth as possible. And again, when I wash it and dissolve the paper, this will all sort of absorb those stitches and any sort of dents in there and they'll all sort of puff up back to their natural natural weave um, and you won't see any any stitches in the edges and hopefully no little pokies or pointies so that's the applique stitch um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and Next, I'm going to show you another project I'm working on. There's a couple of things that I can show you. So first of all, I've been gluing, um, gluing all these Tilda pie in the sky petals, except last night I ran out of glue. So I used my stingy tool and I emptied every little glue cap that I had until I'd run out. And I just had to go and get um, go to my stash and get some more glue pens. So the first thing I thought I'd show you, just in case you haven't seen it, because I know people haven't, is how to put a new refill on your glue pen without breaking it. And it's quite simple, but unless you've seen it, you might not know. So I see a lot of people who try to get this out, pull it out, and then they've got their big long glue stick and then somehow they're going to get it on without breaking and snapping and wasting that glue stick. So you just screw out the end. So I've taken the old one off and you screw out the end and as far as it'll go and just sit that on top. Push it on till it's tight on there and then you just unwind. So I'm going anti-clockwise until my cover falls off. And then it's in there and it hasn't broken. Whereas if I had it all the way out like that, that's when people snap and break off their glue pens. So that was quick and simple, but it's just how to change your glue refill. I even have a YouTube video on that. And it's amazing how many people search it out and find that because it's just something, unless you haven't seen it, you've got no idea how to do it. There's not actually any instructions on the pen. Okay, so then I just thought I'd show you some gluing again for those that haven't seen how easy it is to glue up your pre-glue the turned edges for a needle turn or for a turned edge applique look but without having to use the needle to turn it okay so here's one that's done all prepped ready to go so that's all quick to just stitch down um, and so the dog just wants to get out hold on a tick oh, shed guys gone down to the shed obviously um, okay so now these were a set of laser cut papers and because it's for a project I'm doing like a big quilt that had lots of big flowers on it um, I actually laser cut numbers on the back so I knew which piece was which you can engrave but that's much slower so I, we just quickly cut the numbers out so I, I would know which one goes with which so like so that was number five so um, I could get all the number fives and sort of you could know that that's all going to be the one flower. I don't know exactly which order it goes in. I'll have to get my layout guide to see. But it's going to be something like that. Here's another one. It's going to be something like that, okay? But, yeah, when I was gluing up onto my fabric, I could just find all the number five pieces and know that that was going to be all one flower so I could put them all together. So that just helped me. So, yes, eventually that's how we'll release it like that. Okay, but for now I'm just going to glue this one. I've got my sticky mat here so I don't get glue everywhere and it grips my fabric. And then... This was a new new one, but if it wasn't, I would wind it out at least this far so I can just use the edge of the glue pen around the edge of the paper, no wider than the seam allowance. I'm going to come up so you can see that. You can see the blue pen there. That's why I like the blue glue sticks. It goes on blue. I can see where it is and dries clear. 
Then with my thumb, I just fold until I feel the resistance of the edge and then push down onto the glue and it just feeds around the paper. You don't want to fold the paper, but it will just feed around it like that. Okay, when I get to a curve, I switch to my thumbnail and a pinch and gather. And I've really been struggling with these glues recently, not sticking very well. I don't know if it's the weather or that they're old because they were down in my stash, but I'm really finding that the glue's not sticking as well lately. Okay, and then back to the flat side, I can just use my whole the pad of my thumb again, and that's how quickly I've got it all prepped to go. Now, you'll notice on that one it had a bit of an inner curve, and I've just done a couple of clips in the fabric, but not all the way to the paper. Remember before I said about an inner point, you had to clip all the way for it to the paper. For an inner curve, but not a point, stop a few stitches short of the paper. And that way we won't get those little pokey raw threads poking out on the other side. And it's just enough with the give in a cotton fabric, and it could actually even be on a on a bias you know on the weave anyway so there's heaps of um, stretch there then that will go over nicely without still be a nice curve but it just gives you a little bit of spread there with that little snip to go around an inner curve so don't clip all the way to the paper just stop a few threads shirt short and then again on a smooth sweeping curve I can just use the flat of my thumb I get to the sharper curve and we switch to the pinch and gather and to try and get it to stick on this glue I just push with my nail right down into the glue it's really not sticking well and when it doesn't stick well I find you use a lot more glue too I might get a new one. I'm going to in shop next and just see if it's any different, see if it is because it's older. It's getting really frustrating. Either that or I'm going to let them know that I feel that their recipe has changed and it's not as good. Okay, now if your thumbs don't work, then remember we have tools, thumbs and thumbnails. And it's a bit glary there, isn't it? I need to put my hand there, otherwise it just over... over um, doesn't work out the light very well then we can use tools so the Appliquick tools we can we do have the set or we have our poor man's tools I've showed you before okay now that's not going that's not pulling over nicely there because I haven't clipped that inner curve so again I'm just going to do a little, couple of little clips but not all the way to the paper and then you're going to bring that over and push it onto the glue Again, it's just not sticking very well. Maybe it's the lights. Maybe it's the old glue. This one actually wasn't a Solon refill. It was a Bowen refill, I think. But they're usually all the same. So we can turn around the corner and just bring that over onto the glue. Ah, it just doesn't want to stick. Anyone else found? I'm just going to get rid of this. Anyone else noticed the... Um, uh, okay, let me see. I'm just looking at the comments. The pad I'm using is an applique mat, so you can get them in A3 and A4 sizes. It's washable and ironable, and it's just like a grippy mat. So that's the gidget. My glue is old and sticks really well, so maybe it's not the age. My glue has been doing the same, doesn't stick well at all. Uh, might be a bad batch. Yeah, but I've, I've been through a few and they've all, they would have been from all different batches. I don't know, but I'm going to ask Ceylon about that because this is really frustrating. 
I still, my dream would still be to get my own glue pen developed that sticks well. It's nice and fine. I just need a backer, 100,000 or so for R&D to get it um, developed. Then I could solve all of your problems and my own. Is that selfish? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm much quicker with my thumb. Okay, and then I could give that a press and that would just stick the rest of that down so it doesn't pop up again. I don't always give it a press, or well, I never give it a press normally because I'm usually sitting on my lap on the lounge and I don't have, well, I do have the iron next to me, but I don't tend to because the glue should do the trick. You shouldn't have to be gluing it 10 times. But, yeah, I am noticing a bit of an issue lately. All right, so that's the gluing. Um, so I've shown you the gluing and I've showed you the glue refill the applique tools the sticky applique mat and the applique stitch the last thing i was going to show you is um okay, here's a goodie bag goodie bag ready for me um all being um laser cut lots and lots and lots and i can see now that i can see it there's some really tiny circles in there they're well three eighths of an inch they're not the smallest i've done there are some tiny pieces um, cut in four layers. So just one thing I want to say to you if you're getting applique paper sets. Um, and also bear in mind that we just had a request for some of our older patterns like Vicky Victoria and Simply Sonia that we didn't include, like smaller projects we don't normally include, um, include um, laser cut applique sets for them we just include the applique paper and you trace and cut your own because there's only small pieces and there's a lot of labor involved in the in the um, laser cutting and packing and picking them up and everything although that's you know something for shared guy to do but when we do laser cut them and when you get them we do put a sticker on it now one you get little brown edges and that's okay that doesn't affect it at all it's all water soluble remember it's going to semi-dissolve anyway so don't worry about the brown edges there's no way we can get around that because it's heat that cuts them but that little brown edge with the heat is sticking the sheets with the glue together so you just rub it between your fingers until you separate them so this one's been cut in four layers so i have to make sure i get four layers out of it and take it apart and you can feel that it's thicker like it's really thick with four layers and then I can either sort of split it or just rub between my fingers until I get my four layers out of it. Because if you don't do that and you iron it on the back, then you're not going to have enough before you, uh, when you get started because we just put enough in there to make one project. Sometimes there's a few extra bits, particularly like if we're doing it in layers and say you needed three and we're doing it in two layers, then you're going to end up with four. So you might get some extra. So that is for a, an exciting new quilt that's coming and there's a bit of work in there it doesn't look like much as one bag but there i can tell you there's a bit of work in there and then this is my fabric pull for it so i'm not going to show you what it's going to look like yet but you can imagine there's a bit of work in my future so i need to get a glue that works fair but i've ended up using roxanne's glue the problem with roxanne's is it's not an instant stick so you have to sit and hold while it dries, whereas the saline glue, when it works, is an instant stick and you can just go really, really quick around the shape. So there's that pull. And then here are my backgrounds. So just come out a bit more. You can see all my mess, but you can also see all the fabric so you like you liking the look of it mm, i'm excited about it i think it's going to be cool but anyway that's the next thing i'm working on and what else have i got in my goodie box here uh, remember i showed you the coloring in um, of the banks here so this is just showing you the um the just stitch version without color so it shows you that you don't actually have to have you don't have to colour in. Um, and um, so that same pattern there's, is, is coloured in. It's a smaller pouch. This was actually my um, my prototype, which didn't make the cut, so I ended up doing a different version. But 
that's just showing you without the colour. So it's still quite pretty without the colour. Just a simple little stitchery there. And that one was using a bit of cork, but that never made it into a pattern. So that's just one of my sample bags that I can use. Okay. And I just remember that I did have two new projects to show you tonight that are being released next week. Um, so just give me one minute. I will be back in one minute. Oh, what just happened? Oh, what? Oh, I just lost that camera. Did my camera just die? I might have to go over to this one here. Uh, we need to go to... Where am I? Ooh. Yep. Oh, we might have just lost our camera, so I might have to do it down here. Just give me one minute. Oh, can you believe the dog had to go out? <laughs> Can't win there. Um, I'm in the dark. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to my camera. Hold on a tick. Um, okay, I'm back. If it goes off again, then I reckon my um, battery's going flat because I didn't charge it today. That'd be right. Where am I? So last week I gave you a sneak peek of the two patterns that I released this week. So do Hickey Pouch and the Thimble Pip Purse before I um, put it in the um, newsletter. So um, this week you're getting to see the next two. So, oh, and I just lost that again. Yeah, I think the battery's flat. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to show you, just have it on the overhead. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, you can still hear me? Yep, okay. Um, teasing us with pretty fabric. Oh, it's just plain, Fiona. I'm just catching up on the comments, sorry. Um, Joe said, anyone who purchased the Honeycomb Hokum kits um, last week, the modern um, honeycombs, the, the zips arrived today, so they'll be in tomorrow's post. Okay. All right, so now you get to sneak peek of the next two projects that won't be released in the newsletter until next week. And this one brings some more. There we are. Some more new techniques. And so there was another question there I just heard. Uh, what were you doing with the flower petals you were demonstrating on? They're going to be a new quilt, a tilde quilt, um, Denise, when I get that done. I've got some exciting news, special news coming about that um, later in the year. And so I'm getting er ready early. So this one is called the Shack Bagley Block Book. And I actually designed it to put my nested circle rulers in because if you've got the nested circle rulers, which I haven't got them here, but once you take all those rings apart, then um, they will go everywhere and they, and they can break really easily. So they come on a bit of a, on a backing board. And so I've designed this to put my circle rulers in here and I've used the backing board inside. Um, so one, I don't lose them. Two, they don't get broken because they've got a nice hard board behind them. Now, having said that, I won't get to use this book at home forever. Um, so I'm probably going to have to make myself another plain one just so I can put my rulers in it so I don't break the rest. Fine if you're just using them at home um, and you've got a safe place to put them, but because I'm taking them everywhere and demonstrating in a demo case and stuff, I've actually broken most of mine, which is a real shame because they're not cheap and they're really handy. So I designed it for that, but it also can be used as a block book. So to keep your blocks in progress, um, all sorts of things really. You can just um, you can change your pockets. You can do all sorts of pockets, whatever you like. But the concept of it is that I've, and I think I demoed this, couple of months ago I start when I was just starting to do it I think I was showing you my version of a Kawandi method which I call Hawandi so the hugs and kisses version of Hawandi or borrow or one of those things because of course mine doesn't use pins or tacking or anything mine just uses glue um, so they um, 
they um don't that just to me it's, i just like to try the easiest way of doing things so in this way i can just glue up the whole thing at once and then i can just sit back and stitch now we did this on our retreat when we lost power so half the group had got almost all of it down um, before we lost the irons and so they could start stitching the rest some of them pinned some of them tacked until they could get the iron the next day to put them down but it's a it's a matter of um sitting and doing all your background so we're basically making this piece of fabric out of lots and lots of little scraps and i will demonstrate this next week so my website's not playing nicely tonight oh sorry janie we've had about four people call today i thought finally it was all fixed and um all fixed and good to go but um i think she's working on it so it's just always something and another message from joe shack baggerly kits We'll have different inside fabrics and maybe delayed until the navy thread arrives. Yes. Okay. So we're out of this fabric. Well, we're not out of it, but we're saving it for something I'm going to show you in a minute. So you just get a different fabric, one of the other nice, lovely fabrics in there. And we've run out of the navy thread, so there's more coming. So if you're ordering this, then um, and I am just going to add this to the stream so I can add that in there. Then it might just take a little while before they're sent. Oh, 404 not found. Okay, Jenny, I'll get onto that when I'm finished. Um, so I will be um, demonstrating the Hawandi method next week. Um, and so that we make a piece of fabric and then there's some applique and then the applique has just a little bit of embroidery on top of it for effect. If I come up here, you can see that. Okay. All right, and then this little elastic just goes over there to to hold it closed. All your things in it. So I think that's quite sweet. The names, um, Denise. Yes, I actually um, I have a friend who sends me lots of old names, but these ones I actually would, um, went a bit further and just searched for old words that aren't used anymore. And it does say on the pattern what 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 the meaning of shack bagel is. Can't remember. I think it means you're looking all haggard. <laughs> You're looking a little haggard and, and, and not quite all together um, from memory, but it, it is on the listing, I think, what it means. So that's the Shack Bagley block book. Okay. Oh, you're back now, are you? Yeah, no, you're not getting cuddles. You're in disgrace. Okay. And then the last project, which will be released next week in the newsletter as well, is called the Tara Diddle tote and again i can't remember what the meaning of taradiddle is but it'll come to me or it's written on the pattern and this is and it's going to be hard to show you because we've lost our camera can't go out anymore now i'm right down full as uh, i might be able to go to a wider no i'm down to out as far as i can go now um okay so this has got um, some of our honeycombs so last week we did mod honeycombs this one's got normal honeycombs and we did a little bit of fussy cutting on it so at the retreat they got a little mini fussy cutting ruler just a little mini one and um, just had a go it's a, just a tiny bit of fussy cutting so you do get these fabric two fabrics that you can have a play with fussy cutting but you don't have to um, but this is traditional EP with the app iron on so the iron on leave-in papers and then these ones are just stitched together and then the rest is applied down then we've got some bias vines made with your bias marker and then the matching applique to the block book um, and then the embroidery little features on top and then that fabric i said we ran out of we haven't run out but we're saving it for the end because it actually is like a bit of a feature on the ends there we won't get a lot out of it but we'll get some and then on the back we've just got some stitch and flip through foam and some vinyl so this lovely vinyl um, which is quite easy to sew through do you recommend a walking foot or a vinyl teflon foot um, so we've got a pocket here for your phone to go in or whatever um, and then the vinyl straps there like that and it's also got a vinyl on the base so nice protective base so it's quite a large tote bag i can't show it all to you sorry um, but then one last thing that we made was a little bag base inside 
to fit the bottom just so you had a little base. So for ASA, we um, uh, got the little logo on it, um, but you can you just have it plain, or you can um, get it customized and have your name on it as well if you want that in the bottom. But it's just a little MDF bag base just to keep that. You don't have to have a base, but sometimes the base just keeps it nice and sturdy so it will stand up and keeps its shape in the base. So that's the Tara Diddle Tote, as you can see there. And I don't think I can. Um, let's see. I can hide that. Got sound now? Is that better? Okay. Uh, okay, have we got sound now? I think we might have sound now. Yep, sound back. Yep, thank you. Um, yeah, sorry. Well, I tried to get Bentley, but he's in play mode. He thinks it's a game and he's running around. So <laughs> next week when I've got my front camera and I um, have charged my battery, then I will introduce you to Mr. Bentley because I'm positive he will be here. Um, yes, and I'll show you then. But for now, you're going to have to be happy with me saying goodbye here because um, my camera's died and I will fix that next week. Have a good week. I'm going to go and watch, what am I going to watch? I'm going to watch Extraction 1 and then look for Otto. Um, Fiona, I've got all my flowers cut for the bay, just have to glue them. Same for the block holder, just have to glue them. So um, watch for the newsletter next week. But I have put the um, I have put the links there. They are available to order now, but they'll be in the newsletter next week. Um, he is a, a multi Shih Tzu with a bit of Bichon in him, so which is nice because he doesn't shed at all. Um, Denise, so there's the answer to that. All right, everyone, sorry about that. I haven't had technical difficulties for quite some time. But if you go back and watch the replay, did you like my little countdown? I thought that was very smart. All I have to do now is work out how I can add music to it. That was Shed Guy's suggestion that I have a countdown and music. But I couldn't work out the music yet. But I thought I did well with the countdown. But maybe it took all my battery too. Okay, so bye for now. Have a great week. And goodbye, Mum, if you've lasted this long. But I'd say you're watching Home and Away by now. Um, and I will see you next week with a Hawandi demonstration and uh, anything else that you let me know you might want to see by next week. Oh, it's been a long one, so let's go and let you get back to your stitching. Okay, 